La 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 la. Okay, I think we, we're probably live right about now. I don't know. Hi! It's Saturday morning. This is Art of Rock. I didn't tell anyone Art of Rock is happening, so no one is here. Uh, but if you want to be amazing, uh, every Saturday, this time... What? Great, thanks. Chat. I want to chat restream. Here. Angel Spitz Twitch. And now it's going on to Angel Spitz Facebook as well. We just talk about music and making music and production and, and often we talk about depression and getting through all of the madness. And if you've got three dollars that you want to spend me a month, jump on Angel Spitz Patreon because I'm trying really hard to keep people going and you guys are keeping me going and I love you. And um, while we're here, go get a free download. Woo! New single. I think it's free, last I checked. Um, also, there's a whole bunch of tracks you should really know about. And that's on um, Spotify, and, and some of the people are here. Vince, one of your tracks on there. And um, MTV TV. Once we're done here, we're going to stream over to MTV TV. Because it's amazing. Uh, and the, your favorite band that you don't know yet is waiting for you. And if you're in a band, send them an email, and they will play you. They will play you. Um, and it's an excellent way to, you know, just have your music out there and, and get people to... I need more coffee. Um, so, obviously, you know, if anybody wants to talk, just jump in. While we're waiting for someone to have a moment of inspiration, because it's Saturday morning and we're all feeling this grind, I want to talk about Wagner. Um, and Wagner's really interesting uh, because... It's a really interesting guy. Um, oh, well, there's, there's a spiel. Anyway, we're not going to have that spiel. But what I do want to talk about is Wagner had this concept called the light motif. And what that meant is that every character had their own theme. You know, just a little theme. And every emotion had their own theme. And Wagner had this idea, and this has a lot to do with industrial music, and we're going to get to it, don't you worry. Um, Wagner had this concept that the... The orchestra wasn't just the band playing along with the opera. Wagner's concept was the orchestra was the voice of God. And it was more that it was the universe. Because the orchestra knew stuff that nobody else knew. And the orchestra would communicate with you in, in sometimes really obvious, sometimes really subtle uh, ways. And um, so, for example, Mark comes in and Mark's theme is there. Vince comes in. Vince's theme is there. Vince and Mark are musicians. Here's the theme for musicians. But then Carl comes in, and Carl's the bad guy. And there's something about Carl's music that sounds a little bit creepy, because Carl's the bad guy. Then Carl starts talking about ideas, and while Carl's talking about these ideas, there's music playing under it, and that music is kind of dark and fucked up. Um, so you know there is something wrong because the orchestra is telling you this. Now, I can say this now and it's like, oh yeah, man, we know about that because that's every single movie ever. Thank you, Richard Wagner or Dick Wagner um, for that great invention of the leitmotif. So what does this have to do with music and industrial music and stuff like that? Well, um, something fun is that because we have samplers and other things, people can be, uh, or characters or moods, can be a sample. It might be a creepy sample or a nice sample or a sound. So you've got your beats going on and you've got your bass lines going on and all that fun stuff. But there might be a sound to indicate something is wrong, to indicate something is right, to indicate there is love, to indicate there is fear, anger, resolution, whatever. And the really cool thing about this is that, okay, your song goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, blah, 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 blah. That's great. And you got all, all your bits. That's great. But what you can do now is assign a bunch of sounds that come in um, to tap the lyrics. So as the lyrics are talking about something, there is a sound under it that is hinting towards whatever that mood is. And here's something really fun is you can keep that going throughout the entire album. So whatever that sound effect or that thing is, whatever that trigger is 
for the audience to uh, yield a response, you can start programming people to do that. When you watch horror movies or love movies or whatever, Star Wars is a brilliant idea because you've got the Force theme, which became Yoda's theme. You have the love theme between Han and Leia. You have the Empire. You have all this stuff. And what's really great about John Williams, I uh, love him or hate him, is that his stuff you can sing along with. You know, all of it. So many movies don't do that. I don't know why. Oh, I do. Time, budget. Um, anyway. Um, so there is a fun thing to try. And you can distort all that shit and it sounds fantastic. And you can define what these sounds and moods are. For example, you might say, ah, oh, well, there's a moment where we're talking about the unsurety of the world and how the world is and as everything's frustrated. And you might say, well, okay, the sound of that frustration, I have a walk and I have a lid on my walk. And when I get the lid and I rub it around the walk like that, I'm gonna mic that up. I'm gonna add some reverb and a touch of distortion and a lot of compression. And that is gonna become the sound of stuff that is un the, the unsureness of the world and the frustration that everybody's feeling. Try it, that's all I've got. Ta-da, boom. Anyone? Anyone I want to add to that? And that's why I think, unfortunately, Emacs are fucking expensive and they're getting more expensive and that's a pile of bullshit. You need a fucking software sampler. Because a lot of them are free. And samplers are the best fun. Samplers were actually invented by John the Sampler. No relation to John Internet, who invented the Internet. Don't laugh, Mark, because it's true. You know it. Um, the great thing about samplers is that you can take uh, something and put it into a new context. And another really fun thing, like you can drop the pitch. You can reverse it. Butter, butter, butter. Um, and doing this on an instrument, yes, you can do that on your door. You know the word door even sounds boring? Door. 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 If you keep saying door, you'll fall asleep. But sampler, especially when I say it, um, samplers are great fun. And, and you get, get your little software sampler. And, and a really fun thing to do is say, okay, um, it might have different outputs. And I'm going to assign a different output to output one goes to my reverb. Output two goes to a really brutal distortion. Output three goes to a phaser. Output four is going to go to a distortion, then a flanger. Output five is going to be distortion, then big reverb. There's a lot of distortion going on, you'll notice. So you might have the same sound, and not only are you dropping uh, the pitch and stuff like that, and, and slowing up the attack and decay, and but what you're also doing is you're throwing it for, okay, in this instance, it's going to be just reverb. In this instance, it's just going to be dry. In this one, I'm going to throw it out that uh, distortion, then phaser. So the same sound starts taking on different characteristics, and you can do that across different tracks, or you can do it in the same track, I think everything comes down to Too Dark Park, which is monumental. Monumental album is our Too Dark Park. Anybody want to add anything or do I just keep going? Do I just keep going? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mark, go. Tell me something. Vince. It is Saturday morning, or well, Saturday afternoon where you are. Yeah, well, it's still Saturday morning. Is it? <laughs> yeah. But you're on the East Coast. Me. Uh, Mark, I know it's st it's still Saturday morning where you are. Vince, what time it is are you? for me. I don't, I don't really get up till now. Okay, so. true. Very true. Well, that's not true. I usually get up at like 6 a.m. and then I go back to bed at like 7. Okay. Okay, I get up at 4.30, and it's great. No one, no one interrupts me, not even the cat. In fact, the cat is the one, main one that interrupts me. She just goes back yeah, to sleep and wakes up at seven. The, the cats tend to interrupt my sleep a lot. Yeah. Which is why I go back to bed. 
Okay, this is a relevant point. Ask me a question about music. Go. How do you approach composing music that's meant to be in the background? Kind of like what you did for, uh, well, hmm. Well, Vince, this is a really good one to you rant on because you just put out, you, you, you called it more wallpaper background Eno-esque music. Yeah. Tell us how you do this. Yeah. Um, well, I started by uh, trying out a couple of different AI track creators. And then I used that as the backing drum and bass sample after I chopped it up, put it back together a little bit. And then I added a bunch of retro sounds and slightly distorted drums because it I just I just kind of played with everything till it fit together and I kind of feel like the more retro the sound is and the more distant yet very present you can make it sound the better it works for background kind of things cool or like a, or like a score kind of a piece even soundtrack yeah 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 Mark, what sort of... Uh, it, which is like kind of how I feel like I make most of my music. It's... Stumbling through life is a good thing to do, I think. And same with music, I think. Because if... Go ahead, yeah. Mark, talk. Oh, no, yeah, I was going to agree. Yeah, stumbling is... Stumbling is great as long as you don't have a deadline to be somewhere. Um, that's true. MTV TV asked me, what's the best time of day, uh, uh, what time of day do you create the best at? My answer to that is when I'm not watching MTV TV, because when I'm watching MTV TV, I just can't stop watching it. MTV TV streams 24 hours, 7 days non-stop, and it's awesome. And if you're not watching MTV TV after this, you should be, because it's amazing. Boom. That's MTV TV. Mark, did I just cut you off? No. I will answer that question. Also, um, my brain has uh, uh, two modus of, opera of operandum and rationism. Neither of them are functioning right now. Um, in the morning, believe it or not, I am really good at fixing shit, editing, problem solving, da 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 da. I am very fortunate that my brain works really well in the morning. And here's a hint. If you wake up and you go through this period of kind of anger and high energy and you start having conversations to yourself about imagining other people having conversations to you and they're very adrenaline based and they're very kind of angry, you need to focus that energy because it's just a whole bunch of energy going on in your brain when you wake up. So get up, walk around the house, walk around the block if you can. 4.30 a.m. That's when I wake up. That's when I get the paw. Feed the cat. Go for a walk. Work. Because my brain goes on like that. And I can't turn the damn thing off. So utilizing all the crazy energy that you get in the morning. If you like that. Um, and I will power it for four or five hours. And in that four or five hours, I will do ten hours worth of work. Because I am really good at making decisions that are... I'm not interested in uh, mucking around. I've got to get to the point, got to do it, got to go, 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 go. However, that time of the day is not very good as far as my um, uh, creative side goes. I don't think of cool, creative, new ideas. And the thing I have learned is that um, those ideas come. They just come. They come when I am not expecting them. Uh, I have taught myself how to force them if I need to, but I haven't done that in a long time. I'm very lucky like that, that there's so many ideas coming. I write them down in a book, da-da-da-da-da-da. And um, sometimes it's in the afternoons that I'll sit down at the book and start fleshing ideas around. The funny thing about the morning is that there are standard forms of thought process because everything is very analytical in my brain in the mornings um, that I will fall into. So trying not to be too creative or doing creative things in the morning is good for me because my brain goes, oh, well, all you have to do is A plus B plus C equals D. Yay! Whereas at night, it's like, well, let's not even worry about the letters. Let's think about small molecules of oxygen or something. Um, but the time to edit all of that stuff for me is in the morning. I also do a lot of synth programming in the morning. 
Um, actually, no, that's a lie. I don't. Increasingly, and that's another thing as well as when I'm programming Emacs and shit like that. That just happens. Oh, here's a cool sample. Throw it in the folder. Here's a cool sample. Oh, these lyrics are coming together. Mm, the lyrics have this feeling. What of these sounds suggest that? Um, and then out of nowhere, I'll get a drum beat. Oh, that's a cool drum beat. Write it down. And sometimes I also get a concept of. Um, uh, 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 processing that drum beat as well uh, and, and how all of these things fit together um, I wake up get a cup of coffee, sit on the porch then go for a walk and then I start creating says Diana, thank you Diana um, that's awesome thank you very much um, yes how about you guys um, well I don't do music uh, anything more than a hobby right now so generally I have to work in the mornings well I always work in the mornings but uh, I'd say my most productive time when I have the whole day to myself is probably after I eat lunch because I usually wake up eat breakfast do something and then for a reason breakfast doesn't last very long for me so then I eat lunch and then after lunch I'm ready to do something productive because then I don't need to cook again until like six or seven. Yeah, that's awesome. Can I ask you some questions? And also, sure, Vince, sure. this is thrown at you as well. Um, I find that my brain, um, brains were invented by a guy named John Brain. Brilliant man. Um, thank you. You're very encouraging, Vince. I really appreciate that. Normally, people roll their eyeballs and just tisk and walk away, but not you. And I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, but it was actually John Brain. Uh, not to be related with, uh, confused with John Liver. Um, anyway, so uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, no. So in your job, um, you have a lot of interaction with humans. I do not. You don't? Oh, uh, there goes that. Oh, yeah. No, um, I, I, I work from home. So actually, yeah. So actually, I... I I get ideas while I'm working, so I can just scooch over and like do something with those ideas. But I am supposed to be working for roughly eight hours a day, Monday through right. Thursday. But and I, and I know you work very, very hard because this is being streamed. Alex, it's so hard. good to see your face. And Eric, you've done some work in the background. And it looks great back there. Thank you. I love organizing your, a little bit. Your villain chair is beautiful. So thank you. Um, I don't know what. If you guys are privy to what's going on, privy's a pirate word. <laughs> so is booty. It is. So is R. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so what, what, what we're talking about when you are most creative, and we're also talking about because um, what I'm wanting to go for here, something I want to talk about, and 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 it, it's like okay, humans bring with them energy. And sometimes that energy can be negative. Um, how do you uh, turn that energy, other people's negative energy, positive energy, good energy, bad energy, experience, into music? And thank you, Alex, for putting your hand up because I love hands up because it helps me keep everything going. You have your hand up and I'm going to shut the fuck up. And you are going to bring us knowledge, Alex. You know, I think you convinced me, um, without realizing it, to work during the night because when I think back, the times where I actually finished stuff, it was always during the night. So maybe I just need to pull some late night shifts and then finally finish a song. Because somehow I think that's the, the time where my brain just works like a train track and is not like distracted by 10,000 other things. So I think I'm gonna try that, even though my sleep schedule will be um, less than ideal, but I think that's a risk I'll take. So what I want to know, Alex, um, how do you, when does your brain work best? Because we were talking about how, and we've talked about this before, how as the day goes on, it almost moves from right hemisphere to left hemisphere or something. I got the hemispheres wrong. Do you feel that as well, that you go from analytical into creative or creative into analytical, or does your brain move as the day moves? I think it's less uh, creative and, and analytical, but more like um, 
there's a time where I'm like more focused and more um and, and then there's a time where I'm like um not activated and a bit tired. I'm really not a morning person. You're and not? Lots of time. No, I'm not. No. Alright, cool, that's alright, that's alright. Thank you very much. Eric, I see your hand. Um thank you, Alex. Eric, talk to me. It took me a minute to remember how to raise and lower my hand. So for me it's like when I'm tired and like I think they call it like data mode, like when you're like in this like almost sleep state, like you're ready to fall asleep. I push myself instead of going to bed or fall asleep at that moment, go into the studio, start working on something for as long as I can. Often, I don't even remember what it was. I get up the next day or the day later and I'm like, wow, what was that? And it's usually something that's more creative, not the same thing that I've been doing, but that also works in the morning. Like every Saturday morning, I do that. I get up an hour before everybody else around here as soon as I'm tired, having had coffee, just start pounding away. But that's that works without having like direction. Otherwise, like during the day, if I'm forcing myself to start or earlier in the night, I have to have like an idea or direction or else anything I do just kind of doesn't go anywhere. That's great. It's really, um, I'll, I'll echo that. I'll echo that. I'll echo. That um, having a plan even for the next day um, is so good because you, you go, okay, well, tomorrow morning I'm going to do this horribly boring thing. For example, mixing a track or fucking yeah. something like that. Or I'm going to force myself to finish these lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you set aside X hours where you will go, or minutes, where you will go somewhere else that doesn't have a screen uh, where you can't get distracted and you work on that thing or you sit in front of your screen and you work on that mix or whatever it is you, you have to do and just remember if you can throw an hour a day into your music that's eight hours seven hours a week um and that's a lot man you know if, if it's an hour every two days that's three hours and a half do you see my ability to do maths <laughs> it's really good it's great here's rose um eric i see your hand and i want your wisdom in my ears. I appreciate it. So you made me think of something else. Um, the other thing that helps me, and I never thought this would be true, is having a deadline. And like, so when I'm working with someone else, like doing a remix particularly, or mixing a track for someone else, if I have a deadline, I tend to get stuff done a lot quicker, even earlier. But if I don't have a deadline, like, oh, in the next three or four months, it, I never get to it. Awesome. I totally agree. Um, Rose, we're talking about um, deadlines, the way your mind works, how if you love me, you should send me chocolate uh, and um, anything else. And please, so if anybody wants to talk about the way they work, deadlines, all of this stuff, let's get inspired. Because the thing about inspiration, motivation, inspiration just comes. It's like the wind. I think it actually means the wind or something. It, it means something like that. It's the, the base of the word well, maybe to sweat inspire I don't know no that's per perspire oh, first um, but that's okay um, but but I think the wind um, inspire actually I think the one of the genesis of the word means the voice of God that whispers to you when you least expect it that could be bullshit I bullshit a lot but that's my profession I'm a liar that's what I do Star Wars it didn't happen it was a lie it didn't happen. Are you going to go, oh, George Lucas, you're a liar? Well, you should. I thought Ryan was the liar. No, that's, uh, that, that's Mike. Well, that's Mike. Mike's the liar. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's, so that, another... that, that's his whole thing is that video is the, like film is the truth, but every splice yep. is a lie. A every lie. edit is yep. a lie, and he's an editor, so he's a liar. Um, I totally forgot what I was saying. I was on a rant. It was a good rant. It was going nowhere. I was going to say to add to what you're saying, Carl, is... You know, I'm seeing all the stuff behind you. You got the, the magic wall of analog on the other side of you. That stuff can help provide inspiration. I have most of my stuff is digital and VST. So I have particular VSTs that can help me get some creative loop going or drum, drum or synth. So I usually start with samples or some kind of way of tweaking stuff to, to, to find inspiration when I need it. Awesome. Two things. Thank you. One, remind me, get a bus. Uh, okay, firstly... Um, so motivation doesn't come. Oh, I feel motivated. It very, very, very rarely comes. Um, 
you have to begin, you have to start it, and then your brain will get motivated, which is very cruel, which is a, something that has to be updated in human version 1.0. Sorry, Mark, am I keeping you awake? <laughs> human 1.0, human uh, 2.0, we're working on instant motivation, but that might take a moment. Um, <laughs> and the other thing is, if you wanna get inspired, put yourself in a position that you're not normally in, get on a bus or something. Um, be around other people in other locations, something, something, something. Take a notepad with you and work on your lyrics. Get on the train or the bus, uh, the train and go to Long Beach. I have stories about that train trip. Anyway, um, or Hollywood, I have stories about that train trip. Um, put yourself somewhere different um, and, uh, and stuff will happen. That's all I have to say. I'm not saying another word ever again. Alex! Something that might help, but that, that I've never tried is the 10 minute rule. So just uh, say, I will work on it for 10 minutes and then either be inspired or just leave it at that. Again, I haven't tried it, but I think it's probably one of the things that might help. This got bought up and it was uh, uh, like a few weeks ago, we bought up the 10 minute rule and it was really awesome. And, um, uh, Rose, I see your hand. I'll get to you in a sec. Um, I think we settled on a 20 minute or half an hour rule because in music, there's not really a lot you can do. Like, but having um, a stopwatch or something that is like an absolute drop dead. All right, is that a um, is that a glass like sand thing, Mark? Or, oh no, it's an egg timer. I love it. Um, plus, when it goes off, it makes it loud. Ah. Um. No, do it. Seriously, do it. And you'll force your brain to think, Rose, I see your hand. Here I am. What's up? I missed you guys so much. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I definitely have done the alarm thing. Uh, I totally agree that, like, if you, you know, if you're just, like, lacking inspiration, then you have to do something else. You have to, like, go to the park and sit under a tree or something. You know what I mean? You have to, like, go people watch, you know, someplace or... You know, you just have to really, um, sometimes when you have a routine uh, specific to a certain area, like home, for example, home is like where you think of like rest, you know what I mean? You think of recreation. You're not always thinking about like home is like the place of work, you know what I mean? Mm. So sometimes it's hard to get yourself to switch that gear in your brain that's like, it's work time, you know? That's why people have, you know, that's why artists have studios often that are separate from their homes because you know otherwise they'll get distracted by all the comforts of home so sometimes you have to make yourself a little uncomfortable in order to create um and also uh i just i find a lot of inspiration from other people uh i like that connection between people when it comes to you know i think i've said this in the past a bunch of times but that's really um i think that's the magic that's that's where some of the magic is you know is uh th that moment of inspiration of somebody you know playing this riff and you're like yeah 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 and then you just like feed each other you know like it's like it's the best feeling it's like I, I don't even know how to describe it you know but it's like when you when you get in that groove and everybody's like oh yeah oh and then we can do this and then we can do that and that's you know it's like you get this anticipation and this excitement and uh and everybody just kind of like revs each other up and it's super fun super exciting um so yeah and I agree that 10 minutes is really not enough. I, I, I take a while to write my lyrics, to be honest. So 10 minutes would probably not succeed for me. <laughs> I think um, I, I'm all about the little timers. I think they're a great idea. But I think if you and me, and actually quite a few of us had little timers, they would need to be as a baseball. Because I'd pick that fucking thing and throw it across the room, like constantly. Um, I actually, Alex, I see your hand. I want to come back to that. I want to talk about turning your place into a creative space. Um, but first, here's Alex. <laughs> I think one difficulty is also that it's just not one task. Like, if I want to get better at being a music mu musician, I would practice my instrument, but also write songs, write lyrics, maybe practice singing, and sometimes it's hard to decide which day is the, uh, the time for which task that's something what I struggle with can I make a suggestion at the beginning of every session work on your voice 
uh, do scales. Because I'm telling you, man, you're going to do three scales and we're like, oh, wow, that sparked an idea right there. Um, so work on your voice, do all that stuff, but be open to the breath of inspiration blowing in your ear. With a voice like that, like right next to your ear. And probably so close that its lips are touching a bit and it's got a beard and it's really like rough and it's touching your ear. Alex, I am inspiration. I have bought you inspiration now. <laughs> they recorded this and, uh, at, and sampled that into a song. I can do you one better than recording it. <laughs> <laughs> but we are recording it. I'm oh, yes, we are. We are. Later. we are. I'll get on Twitch and grab this. Oh, hey, it's Diana. Um, uh, Eric. So you mentioned that. Uh, uh, switching to creative spaces so i agree uh with what rose was saying about you know needing to kind of have a change or different place and stuff and we i really created mine like during the beginning of covid and so it was going to be at home it wasn't going to be somewhere else the original plan was somewhere else but that didn't work out and then um what i found is having a creative space where i can kind of just turn off everything else and kind of shut shut everything off um I don't need a timer because my kids interrupt me every 10 minutes. So th that works too. But um, I also found I needed a live like space, full PA, subwoofer, all that stuff. So I set that up in another space that I can go and take the tracks, whether I'm mixing, remixing them or playing live or practicing for a show. I find that if I'm not finding inspiration right here, working on stuff, I can find inspiration in there or be able to hear this, the music in a different way that makes me want to uh, make changes to it. Hey, Diana, just saying hi. Good to see you, Diana. I love it. So we're talking about turning your sp space, place into a creative space. And sometimes it might be putting a sheet up. Um, it might be, um, and we've talked about candles and stuff before, like candles are great. If you can't change the room, change the smell, change the lighting. Um, but you know, you might want to um, put, how about you put up a sheet, buy a sheet, put it up on the back wall and write on that sheet with uh, a Sharpie. And so after a few months or something, that thing is going to be covered in notes and thoughts and, and, and ideas. And then if you ever move, you just take the sheet down and put up at the next place because it's your like creative blanket. Blanky. Alex. I think also um, LED lights can help with like getting into the mood, and they're also quite expensive right now uh, at the moment. Are they? Or in gen like, like in general, All right, like cool. they used to be more expensive than they are now because I don't know. I love it. I, this is a brilliant idea, um, and then you can change the color as well. I've got my LED lights up here, and I never use them, and I, I need to bloody use the lights. Rose. Um, I think I've mentioned before, sometimes like when we were, um, we would be getting ready to perform a show. Sometimes what we would do um, when we were practicing at home is we'd like turn on our smoke machine and put our lights on, you know, like just set up one of like little LED panel and just like have it flashing around just to get that, you know, that feeling of that excitement of like, I'm at a show, I'm somewhere else, you know? It just, it just adds to it. It's like, it seems silly, but it actually works. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. And if you have a projector, because, you know, some people may have a projector lying around, point it at the ceiling um, mm -hmm. and play Akira or a Razorhead or um, Steel Magnolia. I love Event Horizon. Yeah. Event Horizon. The one I play all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, do that sort of thing. Um, and uh, like I have this, uh, images that I go through on my computer or computer, uh, that are Chris Foss artwork when I'm doing Ice Planet 9000. I'm just, it's just these endless Chris Foss images and I go, okay, I'm in space now. Although technically we are all in space right now, traveling through space. Uh, okay, that got the reaction. Does anybody else want to throw in anything amazing right now? Or really boring? I don't know if it's amazing, uh, but I 
I have to like get dressed and put on my boots. And even if I'm not going out, even if I'm not seeing anybody else, it's just mentally I get in that space once I'm dressed, like I have to be creating. That is a great idea. Get out of your damn pajamas and also get out of your work clothes. Like if you have gig clothes, like these are the clothes that I wear. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you want to get some inspiration? Go to a thrift store and pick out your creative clothes. Do it. I'm serious because when is coming and spend 10 bucks and on the most ridiculous pants you can find or whatever and a big baggy shirt and that's what you put on when you're being creative. Because also you've just got out of the house and you've gone to a thrift shop. Ta-da, there's an idea. Rose. Um, aside from that, like if you have a smaller space, which, you know, being from New York, I've always had a very small space. Um, what I usually do is I just make sure whatever area is the music area, um, I keep away any super comfy chairs from there. <laughs> you know, like anything, anything where I'm used to, like I associate that thing with like straight up, like uh, like my video game chair. I can't sit in that. I can't sit in my video game chair and write lyrics because I'm gonna be thinking about playing video games. So if you have that same situation of like, oh, this is my favorite chair, I'm gonna use it. No, but like, you know, you you don't understand that there might be these connections in your head that you don't even, you know, that are subconscious, like. Oh, when I'm sitting in this chair, it's relaxation time. I can turn my brain off. I can watch TV. You know, I can, you know, just play games. You know, it's like, I, this is my, you entertain me chair, not me entertain you chair. You know what I mean? And like, again, sometimes you have to make yourself a little bit uncomfortable. You have to take yourself out from that space. Um, like uh, right now, like I, I'm in the, uh, I'm in the attic, you know, and behind me is the bed. But I never sit on the bed if I'm trying to write lyrics because then I will be thinking about doing bed things. You know what I mean? Like having a pillow fight or you know, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, so I have to sit in like the uncomfortable chair in front of the computer and then be playing the music and then have my little notebook out and then be writing my lyrics and stuff. And that's how I do it, you know? And, uh, and I think that Diana made a really good point. Sometimes you have to like, take off the freaking pajamas and put on some clothes because that that, that makes you realize that makes your brain realize it's business time. you know what I mean like hey I believe this is important enough to myself that I'm gonna put myself in a different outfit yeah. a different mode you know that's what I got that is so wonderful I want to pick up on that um, specifically neurological pathways somebody had their hand up but then it went down Alex? I think I'll, I'll, I'll uh, say it later. I think okay. it fits better. Please don't forget, because I always like what you say. Um, here's a thought. When you walk to your car, or the bus, or whatever, do you take the same path? Very possibly. Because it's human nature to find a path, the quickest, easiest path, and walk that path. So on earth as it is in heaven, in the micro as it is in the macro, the neurological connections that go from pop, 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 walking from your front door to your car or to the bus, are also traveling on the same pathway. And if you want to break that pathway in your brain, all you have to do is go a different way, or stop and spin around twice, and then keep going, or do something random that is going to disrupt the flow of neurological information in your brain uh, invented by John Brain. Um, so let's exactly talk about what you were just talking about, Rose, is, you know, people say, I don't have a lot of room, I don't have a creative space. Well, you do the floor. And you could set things up so you are sitting on the floor. Or you could get a drummer's stool. They're on Craigslist for 10 bucks. Actually, don't get the $10 ones. Get the $20 ones. Um, and you could be using that as your work thing. Because the thing about a drum stool is you can't slouch. You know, I tell you what. You know, we were talking about doing uh, vocal exercises, da-da-da-da-da. 
before you do music. How does this sound? Sit-ups, push-ups, planks. 10 sit-ups, 10 push-ups, 10 planks. My God, I wish someone would get on my case about doing that because if you want to break neurological pathways, that's how you do it. And remember, if you have neurological pathways for walking from your house to your car or the, your, your, this area to the kitchen or the toilet, which you do, um, you've got them in your brain that is dictating the way your creative process. So what you need to do is change that shit. You gotta, you gotta fucking change that shit. And that is like I said, walk to the toilet backwards or something. Take a different route. Spin around a few times. Do something different. Eric, I see your hand. Save me. So a lot of people notice as you get older, it seems like time goes by faster. You drive to work every day and then you realize, how do I get to work? I don't even remember getting, in, getting on the highway. It's the same thing that you're talking about, Carl. Your brain compresses the memories that are the same. So it just pushes everything together. You don't remember those things. It's because of that. And it's, it's, it's habits. It's breaking those habits. And it just by simply doing something or taking a different path every day, you're going to have more memories. You're going to seem like more of the day was worthwhile. And these creative things start to happen as well. And maybe you'll experience something new, too, by going on one of these other paths. Yeah, all about it. And so each of us needs to think about wacky things that we can do, like pillow fights, Rose Go. Um, I totally agree with Eric. Uh, and also, I agree with you, Zook. Um, I actually do a lot of art lying on the floor. <laughs> uh, because, I don't know, it's just like, it, I guess it kind of goes back to like when you're a kid and you're like underneath your blankets with the blanket over your head with the flashlight reading a book or doing something you're not supposed to be doing in the middle of the night. You know, like, I don't know, is that something about that? There's a there's a freedom to sitting on the floor, surrounding yourself with all the little pieces that you're gonna make something awesome out of. You know, and like just being like, all right, let's 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 arrange the puzzle however we want, you know? And, uh, and let's see what happens. And that's always really exciting. That's fantastic <laughs> because let's go, okay, if you're working on a song and you're in totally, oh my God, I don't know what to do with the song, Print the song out, get a pair of scissors, cut out line by line. Um, and the sticky tape or glue it to another piece of paper and then make notes. And your song might be about aliens, alien abductions. So a thought is, while you're doing this, have on a video about alien abductions or watch a documentary about, and for God's sake, you have to be disciplined here that you don't go down the rabbit hole. But watch a video and start writing notes about it and, and give yourself one hour. Set your, your alarm. After one hour, that thing goes off. YouTube goes off. You can have an album or you can have YouTube. Pick one. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, that hurt, didn't it? I finished talking. Rose. Oh, man. Um, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, in circus school, when we were training... Uh, and we were trying to put together a routine, we'd have what we called the bag of tricks. You'd write down all your tricks, you know, all the tricks that you could do that you were physically capable of, right? And you'd throw them all in the bag and then you'd take out like three of them and then you'd see if, can I do these in this sequence? Okay, if I can't do those in that sequence, what if I switch that? You know, like what if I put the last one first and the first one last, can I do that sequence? Because there are certain moves that just physically can't transition into each other, you know? Um, and uh, and it's the same with music, you know. You can do the same thing, like you said. You can cut it out, throw it all in a bag, let let it be random. That's what Bowie used to do. He used to use like computer words, and like it would just like create random like words, and he would just like, you know, spin off from there. You know what I mean? Because he just enjoyed the idea of cooperating with an AI in some way. You know what I mean? And and that's really cool. You know, that's really different. I remember when I first read that, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. You know, like I've never, I've never thought about writing a song that way, you know, and, uh, and yeah, you know, or listen, you know, listen to a song that you like, you know, take a song that you really like and break it down into pieces and think about what it is that you like about that song. Like, is it the structure? Mm -hmm. Is it the way that, you know, certain parts are more sparse as far as the arrangement, like where it focuses on like just a melody for a second and then the beat comes back in and you're like oh yeah I want to do something like that and just write it down 
you know, be an art thief, always carry like a little baby notebook. I like carrying like small ones so that I can like fit it in pockets or fit it in a purse or fit it in whatever, you know, and, um, and just, you know, that, that's what my art teacher always said. He said, I want you all to become art thieves. I want you to carry a little sketchbook and every piece of art that you see, write down what it is that you love about it. And, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, think about all those things and create your own thing that has all of these little feelings of all these things. And even if somebody notices where, you know, where you got that from, you can just say you were inspired. You know, <laughs> it was just like, oh, and he was just like, yes. He's like, I want you all to just really like every piece of art that you see that you like, what is it that stood out to you? Is it the color? Was it like the size of it? Was it like, you know, like, it, was it the contrast of the colors in it? Whatever, you know, and you can do the same thing with music. Um, and I like to do that sometimes, especially when I find a new band that I really like. Um, I'll just be like, oh, you know, like this is really, huh, what is it that is, feels so fresh to me about this song? You know what I mean? And what, what does it feel so fresh about the arrangement of this music? And then play around and see, see about slotting your own ideas into a similar arrangement. It's not going to sound the same at all. It's going to be something different. It's going to be your thing, you know? But um, it's okay to be inspired by other things. I want to pick up on that. Um, remind me about graffiti and what they're thinking, but after you, Eric. Eric, you're muted. No, you're back. I'm back. Am I back? All right. You are back. So Jordan Peele, great movie director, great comedian turned horror film director. Every time someone asks him like a theory about his movies or an inspiration, he goes, yes, of course that is. Like, even if he's never thought of it, he just owns it and says, yes. They said, get out a, a sequel to being John Malkovich. He's like, how'd you guys figure that out? Like, you don't know if it's real or not. He just owns it and accepts it. And I like that because other people get so scared of it and we're influenced by things we don't even realize. And maybe you realize at that moment when someone says it, because all, all, everything we do is inspired by something, whether it's other music or something else. But one thing I do that I forgot to mention earlier is when I'm going down the rabbit hole on, on these weird videos and murder mysteries and strange stuff on the, the back rooms videos and all that with on, on YouTube, I write down notes on my phone and just like phrases, like interesting phrases and ideas and stuff. And then when I need inspiration for lyrics or just starting something, I'll go to that list and it might be a month since I looked at it. And I've done that from stuff in this call too. And I actually just put a note to go sample Carl talking about inspiration or whispering about inspiration later. In my so ear. So it can come from anywhere. In your ear. That's right. It's going to start out with that and be in the break. <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me. So that's amazing. I just want to circle back to the concept of the art thief. Um, when you see graffiti, go on a graffiti. I'm all about, you know, Sonic uh, safaris. As you guys know, I'm always going on about them. Go on a graffiti safari, which Rose being in Brooklyn for you, that's going to be real hard. Um, attempted humor. Find a piece of graffiti. That's good graffiti. It's, it's a stencil of a dude doing something. And ask yourself, there's a story not only behind the person that did that, but there's a story behind that graffiti. Um, on that wall, interacting with all of this other graffiti, what's their story? Who is that person and why are they doing what they're doing in that piece of graffiti? Why? And remember, when you are doing that, you have to... Uh, be inspired by, be open to the spirit of the city that from whence you are in. And that's the exciting part that you are, you're speaking on behalf of the city. And that's when the concept of inspiration becomes huge because you're being a vessel for a greater story. And in that is music and mood and music and uh, visuals. Everything is there. Everything is in the grime of the bricks that's above and under that spray paint. Alex, go. Um, I have an idea from DIY merch and I wanted to ask if it has been done already and if it works. Uh, I had an accident where I was washing my clothes at someone else's place and some bleach got onto my black cotton clothes and it discolored 
and got like um, a um, light shade of brown in the places where the bleach touched. My question is, could you in theory made, ma make a stencil? Maybe, and then brush over t-shirts and then wash it so the, or expose it to the sun or whatever so it gets bleached and have your logo this way um, on the t-shirt. I uh, wanted to ask if it works and if it has been done before. There is only one person to answer that question. Here's Rose. <laughs> uh, yes, it has been done. It, it's been done by a lot of punks, a lot of uh, industrial peeps. Um, look up uh, things about tie dyeing and bleach, and you'll you'll see a multitude of cool DIY videos and uh, and get some inspiration yourself. Absolutely. Word of advice. Thank you, Rose. Um, the thing about when you stencil with spray paint or ink onto a, a shirt is that it's quite defined. The thing about bleach is that it runs. So if you're going to do a bleach stencil, it's got to be big shapes that's not too complicated because anything that's too close together is just going to bleed into itself. Another really fun thing you can do is um, <clears throat> bleach something. They might be just stripes, big cross and then stencil on top of that. Because the fun thing is that whatever color you put uh, over that bleach, um, the color's gonna react differently against the, the brownie bleach and the black of the shirt. And then you've also got sleeves and so much fun stuff. But it's a bit of fucking around. I think there's a really super hardcore form of bleach you can get. Um, I think it's a gel, I could be wrong here. Um, but there it, are forms of bleach that are, I was just about to say, in order to avoid the, um, you know, having the bleach be too liquid and like, you know, bleed. destroying the details. Yeah, the bleed. Um, I usually will use like a paste, you know, like a, <laughs> I've used like, you know, bathroom cleaners that have like a lot of bleach in it, but that are really thick and pasty. And um, you can also use bleach pens. So then you're just putting out a limited amount of the bleach. So that way it won't bleed out as much. Um, those are actually super handy. You can almost, you can like literally write with them. Um, and yeah, there's like, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, there's, there's a, there's a ton of, um, uh, DIY tutorials on YouTube. So just look up like DIY shirt design with bleach. You know, you're, you're going to come up with a ton of it and you're going to, you know, there's also stuff that you have to do after you do the bleach to, you know, once it's, once it's done its job and it's the color that you want it to be. To then stop it because bleach will just continue lightening something you know so you have to like you know check on it and be like okay this is where this is where i want it to be and then you can stop the process of the bleaching 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 which is very <laughs> very political you picked the perfect time to enter maz welcome um and oh. also bleach eats through Bleach eats through. Um, bleach eats through. Uh, so you will, um, you'll go down to thread, and it, it could actually even eat, eat through it if you leave it on there for a while. Um, uh, that was fun. Maz, welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, somebody asked me all the curtains of rock a question because we are the curtains of rock. Yes. Alex? How was the first English bit gig? Where was it and... Uh, uh, it was in Newcastle do? and we played with uh, our band, favorite band, the greatest EBM band in the world called Tanked. And everybody got very drunk. And um, it was like a last minute thing and it was like, fuck, can we do this? Oh, shit, let's do it. And on that night, we wrote the track Wolf. Um, because there was uh, uh, frivolities going on that we won't talk about during a stream. But hey, it was the 2000s. And um, everybody got so drunk. Who did they play with? I think they played with Icon, another amazing Australian band. Um, it was a fucking good, fucking good show. It was so much fun. Um, tanked. Oh my god, tanked. Oh my god, they just rocked terrifyingly. They're so good. 
Um, that was a fun show. And getting everything ready, it's so interesting that when you're starting out in the band and you're just doing your thing, it's like you do all this stuff and all this stuff and stuff and all this stuff. And then after the first show, you go, well, we don't need that shit. Because so much of the stuff that you had on the stage and da-da-da-da-da-da, it takes a long time to set that up. And the other bands are going, hey, man, we love you, but get this shit off the stage. Um, and really, ultimately, people want to see people rocking the fuck out, I think. Um, in the case of Angel Spit, that's what they want to see. They don't want to see bells and whistles. Bells and whistles are great. They add to it. But ultimately, if there is somebody going nuts to a crazy light show, someone standing there boring in a crazy light show, or someone just going nuts, the options with someone going nuts are what's going to win because you are engaging somebody on an animalistic thing. And people want animalistic Um and I, yeah, that's, that's rock and roll. Um, uh, so that's, that's what I got. That was a fun show. It was a fun show. And Newcastle, man. Fucking Newcastle. Jesus Christ. Newcastle. I remember I played this gig in Brisbane with Jekyll Switch. And, um, I miss the way Australia rocks. Um, and it, I, I remember... It was just madness. Like, there's so much madness. I remember being pulled off the stage halfway through a song, like it was the part where I stopped singing and then did stuff on the sampler and Matthew, the guitarist, went crazy and someone grabbed me by the legs, dragged me out. I was wearing leather pants, dragged me <laughs> out of the room. <laughs> I knew them. Everybody was moshing. It was the 2000s we used to mosh. And um, I had to run back onto the stage and finish the song. And it was just shit like that, which was really fun. I don't think you could do that now. Um, but, my God. Yeah, fun stuff. Fun stuff. At least pre-COVID, I've seen people moshing. It really? Was more hardcore shows, but still. Good, good. Good, good. I think, I think moshing needs to come back, but you have to wear giant samurai outfits. Yes. Yes, you're fucking welcome. We should instigate that. I actually, there was a band I knew of that had a bouncy castle and they just blew up the bouncy castle and people would, I think that ended really badly. But I think um, giant samurai outfits, yeah, that's how you fucking do that shit. Inflatable. Yeah. I think you mean sumo outfits. Sumo, samurai. thank you. So, thank you, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, somebody give me some crazy knowledge. Go, now. Um, Rose, what was our amazing song with the bleach? Our amazing song with the bleach just now? Yeah, what wrote? was that? I've forgotten already. Oh, the bleach. It was something about like eating it through because you were talking about... No, like, no, it was the, before the that. Like, you said something and I went... Stopped something. Oh, the bleach. Well, this is being recorded, yeah. so it's on. <laughs> Eventually, we'll, go, we'll find it. We'll find it. And look <laughs> at around about 50 minutes. Yes. That's how good it was. I've already forgotten. Um, well, on the topic of crazy shows, uh, one of my... I was actually on a podcast uh, yesterday with the band, and um, and they were like, oh, you know, what's something like crazy that happened at a show? You know, like somebody like, you know, it could have been heckling, it could have been something positive, just something where like, the, you know, the crowd did something unexpected or whatever. And I was like, oh, I got a perfect story for this, you know? And it was, uh, I was playing this show, it was called the Black and Blue Ball. It was a big fetish, like, and uh, goth industrial party in New York City. It was part of like, uh, New York Fetish Week. So it's like, you know, this was like the highlight. This was like the cherry, like on top, you know? And, uh, and it was a crazy party. It was crazy. It was like anything goes. It was nuts. Um, so we're playing. And uh, from the rafters, a pair of panties flutters down during our set. And it lands on my bassist's headstock. And he's like, you know, he's like all excited and shocked. And I, and I grabbed him. And I was like, who threw these? And nobody wanted to fess up. And I was like, that's okay. And I took a big whiff and I said, I'll track you by set. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> lost their minds the whole crowd i knew my audience you know i was like these guys are gonna fucking love it they lost their shit the whole place erupted it was nuts we could barely get out of the place because everybody was just like crushing around us when we left the stage it was the best 
So, That's yeah. good. I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's it's really important to provide people with a safe place where they feel like they can misbehave. And they're not misbehaving at all. But they feel like they are. And I think that is super important that music is this safe environment to act like a 14-year-old who just wants to throw panties. Panty fight. Right? Um, yeah. Rose, go. Um, yeah. Panty fight. Do it. That would be the best. That was my band love- from high school. <laughs> go ahead. Panty fight was... <laughs> no, was I wish that was my... I'm I wish that was my band. I wish that was my band. I think... What was the hell... What the hell was the name of my high school band? Uh, we had a uh, Eminent Demise. Eminent Demise. And we were a girl band. And we never played any shows. And um, we, we did a bunch of, we just, we were a mess, but it was really fun. I, I think Panty <laughs> Fight would win if they were all big, hairy guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, going back to your idea of like, you know, giving people a safe space. I think that that's especially difficult now because of everybody always having their phones. And some people don't understand. They're so... Uh, preoccupied with documenting every fucking thing in the world on their phone that they don't realize that by doing that they're limiting the amount of crazy shit that's going to be happening around them you know what I mean like all these parties that I'm talking about like black and blue ball all these crazy fetish parties and stuff I, I mean we played so many fetish parties it was crazy and you know back then it's like you couldn't you didn't you weren't allowed to take any pictures you didn't you, I mean you don't you, it's like if you had your phone out somebody would come up to you and be like put that shit away people are getting freaky you know <laughs> like do you want to have fun and get freaky and do weird shit or do you want to sit there behind your freaking phone you know what i mean and it was just so there was actually a, a really awesome concert with um slipknot and somebody in the front row is just like not moving at all and just like you know recording it from their phone and he literally just goes up to them and he's just like knocks the phone Corey Taylor knocks the phone out of this kid's hand and he's just like, look, did you come here to enjoy the show or not? Put your phone down. You're in the front row. If you want to fucking have your phone out, go stand in the back. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, no, this is unacceptable. And everybody in the crowd was like, yeah. And it was like, they were just rocking out even harder for every single song after that. And I think that's just important. You know, don't, don't be one of those people. When crazy shit goes down, don't pull your phone out. Join in. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and and I, I that's I, I do this thing that if somebody's got a phone in my place face while I'm playing live, I'll grab the phone and I'll do half the song with the phone in my hand and then I'll give it back to them and go, put the phone away. Um, it's really interesting what you say about the requirement to document. And we're we're too busy documenting and we're not living, we're not experiencing, we're not you know, we're, everything has to be through a lens now. A fucking screen. And Diana, I think Angel Spit turns 20 next year. Holy shit. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Angel Spit turns 20. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, that got dark. Um, we, did, we did a show a few months ago where someone was recording in the front. And my brother jumped down, got, like he was doing a selfie with him, singing into it, having the guy sing. Then he turned his phone off when he went back on stage. I think my brother turned the guy's phone off, but he got a good recording that he posted later. Yeah, I am. Um, mm, Mark. Uh, so if I may uh, be the devil advocate for a little bit, um, maybe I'm missing. What is the issue with basically if someone wants to just document their experience why should someone actively stop them from doing that like if they're not like doing it in a disruptive way like yeah if they have like a huge like camera set up and they're blocking people fair enough but if someone's just they wanted to record the show that's how they want to experience it I would love to answer this Rose do you want to answer this or yeah okay cool um The argument that I think we are being putting forward is that 
when you're doing this you're not you're not there you yeah. are, you're experiencing something through a screen and if you want to uh, do just a little bit that's fine but people increasingly are doing the whole fucking show or this is my favorite song I'm gonna film it and it's like I'm playing this it's from the perspective of a could everybody pull your phone out just pull your phone out not you mark pull out your phone and I want you to point at the screen like this no right Put it at the screen so I can't see your face. I don't want to see your face. Rose, do you have your phone there? All right. I'm on my phone, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Eric, put your phone up so, so we, we can't see your, your face. Right up there. No, I can see your face still. That's it. Right. Now, you could play to that or take your phone down. You could play to that. So from the perspective of somebody who's on a stage, sure, man, you've got the right to do that. But um, the point of music, I think, is, and, and yeah, sure, like I said, you can video it. But the point is that from the torn sections of my soul, right now, so you can breathe my breath and I can breathe yours, but we've probably got masks on, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You are experiencing something alive right now. Um, and instead of adding it to whatever, because somebody else is going to video this, have the experience of being there and let your mind do what your mind is designed to do, which is remember, kind of. Let yourself be there in the presence of another human being, not on the internet, not through a lens, not through a screen. Have this moment of reality with another person. Because increasingly as we go, and I'll stress once again, hey man, if you want to video it, that's great, you do that. But not too much. As a performer, sure, it's great to be videoed, but I want to, I want to make eye contact with you. I don't want to look at your lens. Because, you know, and, and as the other performers here will agree, the thing about making eye contact with another human being when you're at a gig, and you know, I'm lucky my gigs are small, so I can make eye contact with everyone several times, and they go, dude, stop looking at me. Um, that is a magical experience. Like, that is a real guttural thing. Maybe I'm just kind of getting tired of that. But, you know, because for me also as a performer, that sort of breaks it. Um, you know, and it's great that that, that video will within a few days get more views than are at that gig that's great I'm all about it and I don't mind people videoing I don't I, the, all the copyright things I don't give a shit I think my thing is that it's about the sincere connectivity between two humans that's my thoughts on it Eric I see your hand you're muted we go there to beat off of the inner it's about engagement. It's about feeding off of the energy of the people there. Imagine you're talking to someone in conversation one on one, and the other person sitting there on their phone. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's kind of like playing to people that have a phone up. And you, it's great. You know, like you know, copyright issues. I don't care about those things either. I don't mind little snippets getting out there. I I actually like it. But I want to engage with that person. I want to know like what song they like, what song they like more, what song really gets them. Like our our sets a different song appeals to a different group of people because they're still learning who we are and what our music is. They don't know our catalog. And if everyone's on their phone, those shows, like there's no engagement, there's no energy. We don't perform as well because the energy's not there. You just, and then you're, you're missing out on life. In my opinion, it's like, I got my kids and my wife and I always say, quit taking pictures everywhere we go, quit video, just like, let's live in the moment and make that taking pictures and video parts smaller so we can have a genuine experience. And that experience isn't gonna change if you're not interacting with it. It's not gonna get better. You're not part of that experience if there's a bone between you. And that's that's my feelings about it. Cool, thank you. Alex. So on the one hand, I really enjoy it when I um, liked a gig and I can just go on the inter internet and look, ah, I like this song, what was it called? And uh, I want to relive that. 
so I'm glad when he wrote uh, footage. But on the other hand, I think it makes an atmosphere where we can't let loose in the um, to to a certain extent because they always have in mind, okay, what if I do something wrong? What if I say something wrong? What if I have a slip up? I think it's uh, I think the 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 possibility of uh, things getting like a bit wild not maybe not something like bad like somebody gets hurt or so but i think it reduces the possibility of things like being like um a naughty 15 year old yeah right because everyone then has to think in their head okay do i look okay do, do i um am i being fairly I, represented? Like in, in, in a compromised position like uh um, maybe they they are totally with it and crying and they have to think ah I need to have my composture or maybe I look too much like a fan like too too needy so I have to keep it a bit back and I think if there are no fans you're just more in the moment it's uh, sorry no phones you're just more in the moment you can just lift the gig in the way and um, forget about it because everyone around you has forgotten you the next day and you just in there and, uh, and maybe as a performer you can just be a bit out there maybe I mean I hope people don't say vile shit uh, even when they're not recorded but I think like it's another thing if you have to watch out every word you say and if it's not recorded I think you're a bit more free thank you man um Rose yeah, I actually had an experience uh, just to show, just to show how disruptive uh, that can be. Uh, I went to go see Oats Pep at Webster Hall, the studio, the downstairs, like the one that's more like Stevie's, like more intimate than the upstairs room. Um, Carl, because I know you've been to Webster Hall. Um, but anyway, uh, so it was Oats Pep was playing, and uh, and I came early because also Davy Suicide and a bunch of other bands were playing that I wanted to check out. I try to support the opening acts always. Um, so I went and uh, and there was this person that was like literally on the phone with a friend talking to them and recording. And it was so obnoxious that they thought that their conversation with this person was so much more important than the actual show itself. You know what I mean? Like, and it, and it was obnoxious. And there was like a couple of, you know, it's like when once one person starts doing something obnoxious like that, other people will follow suit, you know? So there was a couple of people and I was just like, oh my God. Like, I was like, just, if, if you want to do that, that's fine. But at least like step off to the side because you're taking up the space in the front where the real fans could be, where the real fans could be rocking out and could be sharing that moment with the band. And instead, you're fucking just standing there, stock still, looking at a fucking tiny screen. You know what I mean? You're not actually looking at, you're not actually experiencing the show because you're too busy figuring out, have I framing it good? Oh, uh, this person in front of me is kind of tall. Oh, you know what I mean? It's just like you're not, you're, you're focused on all these other particulars and you're not actually, you're not actually going to experience the show. That's not experiencing the show. You know what I mean? And it's fine if you're going to do it, do it off the side. So at least be considered. You know what I mean? Because also when you're raising up your arms and you have your phone here, then you're making an obstacle for all the people that are behind you that are trying to watch the show just so that you can take a shitty video. You know what I mean? That's like brainy and crappy and blown out. And you know what I mean? It's not shit. that. And it's distorted as fuck. You know what I mean? They're, they're, it's like you're, you know, it's like, again, you know, it's, it's one thing if you're a friend of the band and you're there to take shots as a favor to them or something like that, or somebody that was hired, those are totally different. You know what I mean? But, and you know, it's, and it's fine to occasionally, oh, this is, this is my favorite song. Fine. Just, just get a little to the side, a little out of the way so that you're not blocking it for the people that are actually there to actually experience it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all. Be considerate to other people. It's not hard. It's not hard. You know, people are there to have a good time. You know what I mean? As, and, you know, and that includes the band. You know, the band doesn't want to see a bunch of people just standing still with a bunch of cameras. But yeah, that, that's not, I can't get anything from that. I can't see the expression on your face. I can't see you 
screaming my lyrics back at me, which is one of my favorite fucking things in the world. There's nothing that pumps me up more than seeing somebody singing the lyrics that I wrote and being like, wow, like you cared enough and you enjoyed this so much that you memorized my words. Like that's hella flattering. You know what I mean? Like that's like the best feeling, you know? So have those moments that, you know what I mean? It's fine if you need that little emotional distance or whatever, maybe it's too overwhelming for you and you want to look at it later and it's okay. But, you know, be considerate to all the people around you and be considerate to the band and don't get all up in their grip. Cause I've had that happen a bunch of times and it's really fucking annoying. Like, you know, where people got so excited and they were like trying to do like selfies and stuff. And I'm like, yo, like I'm, I'm, you can take, you could take as many selfies with me as you want after the show. Like I have to focus on performing right now and you're like distracting and you're making it about yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not about you. It's about everybody. You know, it's about all of us together having a good time. Thank you, Rose. Um, mess yeah i totally agree that like at at a show it's ideal that people are focusing and not focusing on on like getting video or getting shots that like are crap anyway because it's on your phone but on the other hand i feel like it is it is good to document shows um and like it I love watching footage of live shows, um, but it's always better when it's it's like purposefully done with a decent camera and like different shots and stuff. And I wish more bands sort of did that, like at the very least, if they like had someone with like a half decent digital camera filming it. And I feel like I feel like if more bands did that, like made a point of like getting someone to video their shows there might be less people trying to document it on their personal phones um just because like sometimes there is the moment of like oh my god i don't know if like like i'm in this small space and an amazing show is happening and like i don't know if people i don't know if anyone else is going to like know that this is happening or like maybe a moment will happen that like i don't know if um if, if other people will know about it and like it, it it's it's good to be able to document that um yeah i just wish more bands had people <laughs> to actually uh record their their footage because it's it's amazing being like it's it's awesome being at shows but i think it's really fun being at home and watching um concert footage um one of my teachers um in class right now told told us to look at um, live footage for, for vocal technique and, and I ended up just watching like a bunch of full concerts because they're j- just so fun to watch <laughs> awesome thank you I want to talk about that in a minute hello Ivan but first here's Rose Rose you muted did I mute you god damn it I muted you <laughs> it's okay um, it, is, it, is, it is good to have like that footage and stuff but most of those that most of that footage is is usually from an actual professional camera stuff and, and like you know decent, with professional audio the, yeah with professional audio which is super important because your 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 phone might be able to capture it visually but sound wise the sound is going to be ass it's going to be total and complete ass yeah. it's going to suck it's going to be super blown out cuz you know, you're not going to be perfectly placed. You know what I mean? You're going to be like next to a speaker. It could just be like all bass. You know what I mean? Like it's it's going to be a hot mess. So it would be lovely if more bands could uh, do that kind of thing. And a lot of bands do. You know what I mean? Like a lot of bands, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's like this is the kind of stuff that's on people's Patreons and things like that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I've, I've recorded like stuff at shows and I usually try to have at least like one photographer or videographer friend out there but you know not everybody first off can even afford to pay anybody you know what I mean or maybe they just don't know any really good photographers or videographers or maybe they just don't have any friends that are willing to do that for you know what I mean like or maybe they're scared to ask because they don't want to sound like a fucking pretentious snob to their friends you know what I mean so 
those are all things. What do you got to say, Zoo? And maybe the venue won't let them because a lot of venues are really pedantic about professionals. Very true. Whatever. Yeah. And if you're a band and you want to document yourself, a lot of venues are going to charge you for that privilege. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's those big venues will do that. They suck. Oh, medium and small venues are doing that now too. Um, the amount, yeah, yeah, the amount of times that um, afterwards a sound engineer said, oh, you can't make a recording, but I can make a recording for you. Oh, cool, man, let's do that. Sure, thanks. That's a hundred bucks, thanks. Wait, what? Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, and like with, you know, fun things like OBS, you can be doing setup, you know, have you got an old mobile phone that you don't use anymore? Here's one. Works fine. Got a camera. I, I use OBS Ninja. It sends me a URL. That URL comes up in OBS. So I can be going from camera to camera to camera and I can be taking a fu uh, the audio out of the um, my headset feed uh, for my um, in-ears or whatever. Um, so you can be recording stuff and, and making videos and fun shit like that. Um, there are ways, but yeah. Or you have a, a phone and you pass it from member to member or something. I don't fucking know. Um, hey, we're going to video this song. I'm just talking a whole bunch of bullshit right now. Somebody help me. Save me now. Bring forth a question. A great question. Anyone? Anyone? Ivan, I see your face and you're outside. That's weird because I thought you'd melt. In Chicago. What do you? Oh, it's cold waves. Ba boom. And and yeah, uh, yeah. Recording re recording the show with your phone and just the mic on the phone, you you you're gonna get sound that's ass, absolute ass. Uh, good news this this weekend at cold waves is like you don't see just like a, a sea of hands in the air recording the shows. You, you, what you see is. Lots of people enjoying the show there in person for reals, which is nice. Uh, yeah, and hopefully it gets to be more that way, not less. Because you know, the more you like, getting video is great and all, but you know, and like as a participant, as like somebody in the audience, I mean, I really want to just be at the show. Yeah. It's yeah. So I limit I limit my recording of of concerts to like half of a song. It's really curious how um, increasingly um, phones and that technology have moved in, um, and it's becoming um, something you said, uh, Alex, which I really appreciate, was about how. If you slip up, if you say something wrong or you misspeak or your words get jumbled and someone, you know, shit like that can cost you your career. You know, yes. if, if you say something that you didn't mean to say or you made a joke that was... Vaguely inappropriate. Vaguely inappropriate. Um, you're, you're gone. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, that's what I think of it. Um, yeah, when, you know, I remember the olden days when, like, if you thought you were going to bring a fancy camera or recording equipment into the venue with yourself, you'd get stopped at the door. That's not making it in. Yeah. You the, know, these days, oh, it's, it's your phone. It's in your pocket. It's there. It's, it's fine. The olden days. Why? You mean like five years ago? <laughs> Yeah, crap. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, but like, yeah, like five years ago. I love it. Um, Ivan, you rock. I'm going to throw this to Rose while you're eating. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, besides the rules of certain venues and stuff, there, there is also, and also, if you want to, if you know, it's like if you want to just do a quick snippet, like, you know, say you want to go on your live and just show, hey, Oh my god, I'm having the best time. You guys need to see this band play. That's totally cool. It's only going to be for like a, you know, like a minute, you know what I mean? And then you put it away. And that's fine. You know what I mean? Or if you want to do extended video, just do it someplace where you're not in people's way 
so that you're keeping them from dancing and having a good time. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying to not ever record. But we also came from a time where it was not so ubiquitous. You know what I mean? To have people constantly recording stuff, you know? And it's great that now that that exists, I do think that one positive thing is, is that um, we now have ways to show evidence of when, you know, things that happen that are like racist or assaulting or insulting or whatever. And you got that footage and you're like, nah, I'm going to bust this out because, you know, that's different. That's an emergency situation that you're trying to document to get evidence for. You know what I mean? Like totally different. Um, And I just think that it's important to kind of keep in mind, like when it's appropriate and when it's like actually like ruining the experience for other people. And yeah, I'm very happy that I grew up in a time where nobody had cell phones. You know what I mean? Like, the, like you know, when I was a teenager, everybody had, like, beepers and shit. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't have, like, cell phones and stuff unless you were, like, rich. You know what I mean? And then it was, like, super big and obnoxious. Um, but uh, <laughs> it was also, like, you know, you could get away with doing stupid shit. The stupid shit that teenagers fucking do. You know what I mean? Like, teenagers are dumb and you do dumb shit and that's how you grow up. And that's how you, like, you know, just have your rock and roll life. You know what I mean? And it's, like, it's hard to, like, I feel bad. I feel bad for kids now that like, you know, here's this embarrassing moment and now it's entertainment for the entire internet. You know what I mean? Like that sucks. That yeah. really fucking sucks. You know, like well, it gets to follow them for the rest of their lives now as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're, you know, shit your pants boy or you're, you know, what I mean? like it's like, ooh, like you don't want that tag. Pansy sniffing but now rock that's star. you forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, yeah, what an age we live in. Um, I'm also grateful that I was brought up in the pre-olden days where uh, if it was you're going to meet your friends, we're going to meet on town hall st- steps at 1 o'clock and at 1.15 I'm going because uh, the movie starts at 1.20 and you've got to book it. And then you get home and there's a note on your door saying, man, I wait, waited for you. Where were you? <laughs> yes. Um, I think removing phones from society for one day would either cause absolute havoc or would be the best fun ever. Who knows? Um, Alex, I see your hand and you're rescuing me. You're rescuing me, Alex. Yes, I wanted to say something smart, but then Rose had almost everything I wanted to say. So I said this. Back in the day, people had to bring in boxes and put a, t- a towel over the head, and then every band had to s- sit still for a minute. And then the photograph was taken, <laughs> and that's what uh, was our experience. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I think it's not only that everything's being recorded, but that everything can be distributed in minutes. So I think that's also something. And to be fair, I think people can, can also be awful over, and people know that they're awful and they have still a career. So I think both happens for some reason. I don't know. It's, it's a weird world. Yeah, we're making the future up as we go. We're making the future up as we go. Uh, uh. That uh, is after um, the bleach eats you away. What was it? I don't know. It's gone. But raise your hands up. Yeah, no, um, just to just to pop back on that idea of, uh, yeah, back in the day, you had to make plans and then you just had to be there, you know, like you had to like figure it out or like print a map from MapQuest, like, you know, and then if you missed your turn, you're fucked. You have to like figure this shit out. Now you have to find a gas station and you have to figure out how to get back to where you were coming from. You know what I mean? And it was, it was, it was wild. An day. adventure. It was wild. It was an adventure. <laughs> It was. It was an adventure. It was fun. There was there's a certain amount of I I think now and you know whatever. I'm old, fine. Um, but um as I think now that like, you know, uh it's that people are flakier than they used to be. You know, because like back in the day you just had to like you said, you had to make your plan, be like, I'm gonna be here and we're gonna meet here. And if you're not there, oh, well, you know, hope that somebody has a beeper and maybe you can beep them and they can tell you what corner they're on or something like that. But most people I grew up with didn't even have a beeper. You know, like you only had a beeper if you had like a job. You had a beeper if you were a doctor. 
uh, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't a thing, you know? So, you know, when you were, when you're just like a teenager running rampant and doing, doing teenager things, you know, you're just running around and you're just doing your thing and you, and I, I kind of like that, you know, cause people couldn't focus on being on their, on their phones. People just converse with each other and look each other in the face and, just you know, be friends. Really, really quickly, <laughs> really quickly. I'm going to throw it to you in a second, Ivan. In Australia, there's a thing called silly buggers. And it's something that children play. What? Playing silly buggers? Um, people don't play silly buggers anymore. And they need to. We need to play silly buggers. God, I've lost my accent. I can't even say it correctly. Silly buggers. <laughs> so go play silly buggers. I, um, Ivan? Yeah, I, uh... I don't like letting the technology ruin the experience like a lot. Uh, last night, uh, you know, for the show, uh, you know, my, my wife tapped me on the shoulder at one point and was like, look next to you. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. And like Paul Barker is just standing there watching the show as well. And nine out of, you know, like far too many people would be like, oh, I got to get my camera out for this because like, like right now I got to get, and I was just like, this is fucking awesome. We're just, it's just the show. This is great. Oh, and, and this is the was a choke chain from Milwaukee, and like Paul Barker was into it, and I was like, boom, boom. There's Milwaukee getting put back on the map. Bam. Thank you, Diana. Kill me. Well, first, Rose, if I may give it away, we used to memorize the payphone numbers, but anyway, um, <laughs> um. I used to work at a live events theater and I remember specifically we had some MMA fights and ticket sales were down because what was happening was people were coming in and Facebook living the event to their friends that didn't want to pay for the tickets. And that was a big issue. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, so that, that has happened quite a few times, not just the MMA fights, but for other live events where okay, people are starting to live stream the show to their friends. And so ticket sales for the venue, at the venue at least, are down. I don't know if that's still happening, but it was happening the last time I was working. So, just saying. Hmm. Curious. Very curious. Um, Alex, I want, you, you have to sing to me. I think Ivan was first. Oh, uh, Ivan, is your hand still up? Because he doesn't okay, want to sing. Anyway, you um, have to sing. Go, sing now, sing. And we're okay, gonna video uh, it. <laughs> it's I not think... easy, is it? <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Go. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> The good thing about music is that it's really not the same experience watching a live stream versus being there in person. I think that it, uh, being present in person will always have the edge over uh, just watching a live stream. Yes. 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 And so the, the challenge has become how can you make live streams crazy? Hey, when's Temple? Fuck, is it this weekend? October 14 to 16. Okay, cool. So Temple is October 14 to 16. Plug. Um, yeah, I... Um, yeah, my, here comes a rant. I, I, I need to learn how to make live streams really awesome. And I haven't done a live stream since I've been in this house. Your um, live streams are among the best. Thank you. That I've seen. My live streams, I can't live stream anymore because my, at the previous place, we had the best up, we had like a 200 megabyte upload. It was great. Here, it's balls. Fuck you, Spectrum. Fuck you, Spectrum. I can't say that more Australian. Maybe I could. Um... But yeah, I because I want to figure out because like live streams are here to stay, and and you know what you said is so true that you've got to provide an experience. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out because my camera broke as well. I have to figure out what can I do to make like live streams really cool. Um, I don't know it's a thought, Rose. Uh, first off, I've loved your your live streams in the past. 
um, they were really fun. You know, you just look like a mad scientist rocking out, and <laughs> and that's exactly what you are. And it's just it's fantastic. So thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to when hopefully you're not on Spectrum anymore because Spectrum does fucking suck. Um, go to uh, what are they called? <laughs> um, there's some uh, Starry. Starry fucking internet. They're amazing. They actually started in New York and they've got some crazy cable connectivity and they're just the best speeds. Starry right. internet. The best speeds on the internet. <laughs> um, Rose, back to you. Um, but yeah, I do I do think that um, I think that live streams are obviously here to stay and that they're that they are good, you know, because there's you know, what if you have a band that's like across the world from you and there's very little chance that you're ever going to be able to see them live then that's your opportunity to get to see them. And that's really rad. You know, like I'm not against technology at all. I love technology and I love gadgets and I love learning about new things and seeing, seeing the progression of technology. I just, uh, it just makes me a little sad for people when I see that they are denying themselves the experience because they're so, um, so wrapped up in their phone. They're so used to it that like, you know, that's how they, that's the main way that they interact with the world, you know, and I, I recognize for some people, you know, for neurodivergent people, maybe that's more comfortable, you know what I mean? Um, Cause I'm neurodivergent and I know sometimes I can get overwhelmed by, you know, in-person stuff, you know what I mean? And, um, and that I can understand. But again, I, that, those are not the kind of people that I'm talking about. The kind of people that I'm talking about are the people that are literally like just being super fucking inconsiderate and they think that their their shitty phone video is more important than anybody else being able to enjoy the show you know what i mean or stuff like that that's what fucking gets in my teeth you know mm. um, but uh but yeah i i do like technology and i do think that it's really good to do live streams for fans that are just far away you know like what if i never get the chance to see you? i i actually when I first found Angel Spit, I never thought I'd get to see you play. And then I remember when I find when you finally came to New York, I was just like, ah, I was so excited. I was just like, oh my god, this band's like from all the way across the world. That you know, like I remember when I first bought your um, your album, I sent you like a little email, and I was just like, you guys are awesome, and you inspire me, and you know, because like you guys were kind of doing a similar thing to what I was doing, but you know, more successful. You know what I mean? So I, it felt like. I could do it. You know what I mean? I felt like I could do it. Like I could have like a little two or three person band and I could still go out into the world and do my thing and not give a shit. You know what I mean? So it was really good. <laughs> That's really important to, you know, also think about how, um, thank you, by the way, um, to think about how, you know, even if you just have yourself and a bad internet upload, fuck you, Spectrum, um, how you can still somehow manage to you know to reach people um yeah that's it that's all i'm gonna say i'm not saying another word again in my whole life alex so um depending how good your mobile reception is and if you can maybe afford to pay extra for the higher uh, volume plans you could try uh, streaming over um cellular because i found that the connection is good enough to do it it's stable enough to do it awesome uh dr karen is on hi dr karen you're the best check it out look at this i think it's called selenite or something uh i'm going to be running um uh, uh an audio tone through this soon to experiment with our madness because me and karen do crazy shit with crystals or talk about it i still want to do that um, yes, uploading via phone internet. I have to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, Cillian Knight. Cell, cell, cell. Oh, I'm not even going to try. Um, but awesome, crystals. Fuck yeah. Um, okay, come on. Give me some, give me some knowledge. Go, ask somebody a question. It does have audio pop properties, by the way, and um, and it's um, it's bloody cheap. It's so funny. I got this for free. I've been going. I want. I get a piece of that shit, and a friend gave it to me along with some sage. 
Mm, sage. Can you use that on the blaster beam? Yes, I can. But I um I'm c concerned about. Look, I just marked it. I'm concerned about um. Oh shit. I don't want to. Uh, I'm scared. I'm going to shatter it. Um, but I do want to uh, utilize it because one thing I wanted to do is like get an end, and um, so that this thing is like bolted to this end, uh, then another end, and suspend it, and suspend it between two strings. Um, and this end of the string would be going to a piece of metal that would be. Um, um, uh, are being amplified, e even if it's using a piece of wood as a resonator or something, and this one you'd be playing. So the, the, the signal will be traveling through uh, the cylindite, how do I say it? I don't know. Um, and it would be altering the sound itself. Because by the time the sound went to the pickup device, uh, it would have, it, it's got to travel through that crystal. Um, and I want to do that with a bunch of different crystals and stuff. I have some very whack ideas that I want to, um, that I want to play with. But I need to learn. Um, because I'm just scared I'm going to shatter it. And I did just mark it. Mm, sorry, crystal. Oh no, wait, I'm rubbing it off. Um, yeah, I don't want to shatter it. Um, anyway, there you go. Because uh, it's it's something I'm really fascinated is is um, uh, crystals, audio, creating, uh, and how they shape things because they're um, lattice atomic structure and that changes sound as it moves through it. Pada, there he is. Carl's talking. Okay, somebody. Oh Christ! But I just touch. Somebody asked me a question, and it better be good. So, um, if any uh, has anyone has a good idea about an enclosure for DIY electronics projects uh, that can accommodate many knobs, uh, let me know. A cigar box. A but lunch box. Yeah. I go to a thrift shop and um, <laughs> see what's there. The problem with getting I toys and stuff do is that there's a lot of ribs and stuff, like supportive ribs on the inside, and you've got to clear out its guts. Um, but I'm sorry, Ivan, just jumped in. Go, Ivan. Yeah, yeah, go to a cigar shop. They, they usually have to get rid of those boxes, and they'll just give them to you because they can get rid of it for free instead of having to pay to get rid of it. And they're really, uh, sonically, they're great resonators. Um, they are fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no, because they put like really high quality materials into making those things. Yeah. Okay. Um, meantime, I gotta get going. We're gonna go see Martin Atkins. You rock. Say hi to Martin. He doesn't know who I am. He probably hates my band anyway, but send him my love. Ah, I will. <laughs> Have a good one. All right, you rock. Um, that's a thought or a lunchbox. Um, and in fact, lunchboxes are great because some of them are metal, therefore it's grounding itself. Um. A briefcase. Um, yeah, I know it's kind of big. Um, uh, uh, there are many things. An old CD box. An old light that's round, so you could create something that's round. An orbicle. Orbicle isn't a word, but it is now something that's round, not spherical, but orbical. Coffee cans, if nobody already said that. Coffee cans. They make excellent lots of things. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Karen, as well. Um, uh, yeah, heaps of stuff. But this is a... Go to a thrift store. And also look online. Because if you want it... If you want it to, like... If you want to put springs on it as well... So... And, and like, little mezzapiso mics as well... With little amplifiers in them... So you might be tweaking stuff and... Butter, butter, butter cigar box it's the route and there's some of the cigar boxes are kind of big as well there's little ones and big ones just like dreams and aspirations I have a question uh, is there any deeper meaning to Buddha 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 has anybody what 
Is there a deeper meaning to Buddha, Buddha, Buddha? Is that something I've said in the past? You say it all the time. Oh, bada bada bada. Oh, bada bada. Yeah, yeah, Buddha. not like not like Buddha or Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. It's like you know, bada bada bada, yada yada yada. As it is, well, I guess it's it's yada 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 without the, you know, as it travelled across the country, you got to be in there, you know, dot dot dot. But there is a deeper meaning, and I can't talk about it here. I can't talk about it on air. When we go off, I will tell you the truth of the deeper meaning of bada bada bada. Pronounced bada bada bada. Um, Rose, hit me with your rhythm stick. <laughs> okay, I got a question for all you uh, engineering types. Um, so I have uh, I run my track. I run my tracks off of. Um, I run my drums off of a pedal, as you guys know, um, and uh, and it's great, works fine, it's cool. Uh, but I have noticed that when I added um, all, all the songs that were in there were all mixed by the same person, so all the levels are the same. But now that I'm adding new songs that are mixed by other people, uh, it, it's like there's certain the new songs, the levels are like not as not as loud not loud enough or something like that and so i just i need something to um plug my pedal into uh, option b is yeah. it's this is a mastering issue yes so i know um the first thing you could do is get the track analyzed and find out what the average uh volume is okay and yeah, you then might want to go through and you might want to make sure that these new tracks are normalized some people normalize them to zero dB, so they are as loud as they can possibly get. Other people don't. So you mm -hmm. might want to make sure that all of the levels there are correct, so just drag them into the computer if you need. Mm -hmm. um, failing that, what you might have to do is turn down the originals, and you go, okay, for everything we're going to do, it's going to be minus 15 uh, average volume or something, I don't know. But this this is a pain in the bum. This is a real pain in the bum, and I apologize. Uh, <laughs> it's just one thing you got to figure out. Um, but yeah, yes, it is. You could get um, like I don't. You'd have to get a stereo. I would be suggesting a compressor. But now it's like, oh fuck, why? When you could just get get it mastered. Like if any of you guys have got, I would offer. But my um mastering skills are crap um, there are people who will master tracks quite inexpensively and I can show you uh, some of their emails and connectivity if you like um, like 20 30 bucks a track um, or you guys could pull it into something like isotope and really delicately master it and the thing is you've got to a B them against these other tracks as well um, yeah I hope that helps it does, it does. So don't I, get uh, a track. <laughs> you know, do it pre-production. Yeah, pre I got you. Okay. Um, also, um, back to you, Alex. A mask. You could use a gas mask, or you could use a mask mask, or you could use a doll's head, or you could use a mannequin's head or a ma mannequin's leg, or a mannequin's torso. Torso. Ideally, it would be something that fits nicely on a deck, uh, on a desk next to other gear. So, a mask might not be the best option. Okay. Um, uh, but I think I'll ask for cigar boxes. I think I have like a um, dedicated cigar shop in my town. And cover it in stickers. You gotta make it look cool. Yeah, punk that shit out. Punk that shit up, like. Everybody, oh, look, it's a Queen of the Static a, Opera one. A cookie thin. Yeah. Hold on, I think, Maz, did you speak? Yeah, you might be able to find, like, a cookie tin or, like, something for for candies or something that might work. Unfortunately, most cookie tins here are around, I think, but I can look for it. Yeah. Uh, depending on how large the electronics are, I've seen people put things in, like, Altoids tins, like little mint tins. What are you building, Alex? 
Alex is going to show us what he's building. Yeah. Oh, he's got something. What's going on? I think I've talked about it already, but it's like um, it's like a mod, a not modular, but like more DIY kind of. Well, what does it do? What does it do? Sh show us the knobs. Show us the knobs. Spirit. I, I, I need need to solder some bits. What does it but do? It in MIDI and audio. So it's a MIDI converter, Buddha Buddha. What does it do? That was just uh, a Buddha like Buddha. It's an arm processor, butter, butter, butter. and you can can configure it like a modular synthesizer, and you can assign um, potentiometers. Uh, but you need to solder them yourself. So that's amazing. Yeah, and it sounds quite good, but you need to do lots of it itself. And I ha have it like for a year, and I haven't done anything with it. But I kind of want to. Well, that's the other cool thing is trying to set aside a day where it's like, fuck it, I'm going to do all of those things that I have to do to upkeep my fucking modular synthesizer, like solder jacks and clean the Emacs and stuff like that. But that's fun. Rose, I see your hand and it's reaching up Ooh. into the sky. Where the speak. rain is and it's gonna <laughs> fall down because the rain is blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rain oh. is blood. Hell, our dark prince. Go. On. Thank you so much for that serenade. I really appreciate it. I needed that today, Carl. Um, now I, I, it was so good that now I can't remember what I was gonna say. Uh, hold gear. on, what we were talking about. We are talking about gear. We are talking about... Damn it, I lost it. All right, I'll come back. I'll come back. I'll figure right. it out. All right, well, you could make it up because we're... Uh... All right, well, what we could do is, uh, unless anybody has anything amazing, we could uh, call this Magic Space Camp. Let's call the Magic Space Camp. Yes. All right. Um, or we could wait for Rose. No pressure. Ah, oh, she ran away. Um, okay. Well, we're going to bugger off. Oh, hey, let's fucking go to MTV TV. Um, Diana, are you capable of uh, zooming us? Can you can you rate us on over? Um, and if you're still there, please uh, join us because we're all going to go. So we've got like eight people on Angel Spit Music. I'm going to try and raid... You should try and raid too, so we kind of like do a double raid. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Maybe it's not a thing. Gee, I just don't know anymore. Attempting okay, we, ra we raided, but this channel is, is for mature audiences. Can you handle it? Oh, yeah, I think so. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to MTV TV, and if your uh, amazingness didn't raid, hold on, did I? Did I? Uh, I can't remember. Wait, wait, don't run away, don't run away, wait, wait, wait. Ah, and we're back here next weekend, always, 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 always. Um, so we're going here. Boom, and this is where we all wave goodbye. Uh, 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 uh.